Hey guys, this is a mega video of all of my top 2021 Christmas DIYs, so let's get going. I am going to be using some fabric from the Dollar Tree to create my Christmas tree on this wooden plaque that I also got from the Dollar Tree. So before I added the fabric, I actually spray painted it with some heirloom white spray paint and I'll show you the bottle a little bit later on in the video in the, in the episode and it's just a spray paint from Rust-Oleum it's more like an antique white so I spray painted it out in that color and then I just cut little strips from this leftover fabric from last year from the Dollar Tree I haven't seen it this year now I have not been going a lot to the Dollar Tree to be honest with you I'm trying not to spend so much money at the Dollar Tree because it gets very very expensive so I just cut it into strips strips and I eyeballed the size of the strips. I try to make them a little some longer, some shorter, and I wound up just cutting them to size as I was putting the tree together. So it doesn't really matter what size you cut them, cut them bigger and then you can cut them to size however you wind up having them like how, how big you want to make them, which ones you want at the bottom. It really is up to you. So you can, you're going to see kind of what I did, and then you can kind of take it from there when you make your own. And you can use any fabric. You don't have to use Christmas fabric. It's whatever fabric you have left over. If you have like a color scheme that you're going with for your DIY, for your Christmas, you could use this in your color scheme. But these are the fabrics I had left over, and I thought they would be really cute on a Christmas tree. So some of the pieces I wound up twisting and then hot gluing in the middle and then putting them down. Other pieces I tied in the middle and then hot glued them down. So again, it just depends whatever look you're going for. It just depended if the piece was a little bit too long and I was afraid that if I cut it, I wouldn't, it wouldn't match up. So then I just made like a little clump and they all kind of look like they have clumps in the middle. If you wanted to be really precise and have everything kind of be like super lined up, you could also put one of those wood dowels down. Um, not wood dowels, like, or we could use a dowel, but you could use the skewers from like the barbecue section that they have at the Dollar Tree and just glue it down the middle so then you have something like a point and you could tie the ribbons around it. I've seen that done before but to me this was easier and I did not want the wood piece on there so I liked the way this turned out and I just alternated the fabrics. I also tried to kind of point the fabrics up a little bit just so that it would look kind of like a Christmas tree. I always do that with my branches to kind of aim them upwards. And then at the end, I just put a snowflake sticker. And then at the bottom, I just did a piece of a dot tumble block that I had. And I hot glued it to the bottom and I painted everything in, in a black color. I also dry brushed around the piece. So here's what that looks like. And I just dry brushed the black around because I thought it would just give it more of that rustic feel. And I always like the dry brushing and the antiquing and all of that stuff. I haven't done black in a long time, but I really like the way this turned out. I think it's really, really cute. And it'll look awesome in a tray. I will have a tray decor video next week, not next week, the 16th coming out. So I hope you do check that out. That episode will be over on Vesna TV Home, so make sure you check that out. I'll have it posted in my community as well. And then for the next DIY, it's another cute one as well. And this is probably the easiest DIY ever. I'm ashamed to even call it a DIY. So I like to save Christmas cards that we get, and this is one from last year that I saved. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this frame from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be cutting this old Christmas card to size so what I do is I take out the little picture that's in the frame and I kind of use it as my guide of where I'm going to cut and then I cut it to size and I put the little card in there and that is the DIY. I love this frame. I don't want to stain it or paint it or anything. You could if you wanted to. You could use any old frame that you had, but this is the one that I used and I've used it for Halloween too and I just love the way it looks and it's so easy and anyone can do it. 
just save your Christmas cards or buy new ones if there's really nice ones that you like. Sometimes not all of us have printers that we can print images and maybe we don't want to be, you know, maybe we don't even have a hot glue gun or something like that. So this is something simple that you can do and create really cute decor for Christmas or for any holiday. And you can use that frame for Christmas, for Halloween, for Easter and just change out the picture. So it could be something really inexpensive that you do. You could even take like from magazines or flyers or something. If there's like a picture of a Christmas tree or something that you like, you could use that too. And that could be even simpler and even cheaper. Let me know what you think of this one. So these next few DIYs are actually gift ideas that you can even get going on right now. So let's start with gift number one. Really easy to do. I'm using some of this rope from the Dollar Tree. It's just a nice Christmas color. It's red and white, so I really like it. And I will be using all of these candies here and this little snowman, again, I mean snowman, Santa from the Dollar Tree. And I've got some Skittles, some Jelly Beans, some Mike's, Mike and Ike's, and some Sour Patch Kids, and these little candy cane M&Ms. So what I'm doing is I'm making Santa's sled and he's going to be carrying these Skittles and Jelly Beans. Really, really easy, really cute DIY, and this can be for a candy lover, for anybody, really, or a kid, or an adult that loves candy, whoever, but it's just something really cute to make and very easy. So what I'm going to do is just dab a little bit of hot glue on the candy canes, but just very little, and I'm going to dab it on the boxes as well just to glue everything together and then I'll use that rope to kind of tie everything together and then I'll use some ribbon at the back as well to tie the sacks together. I don't want to use too much just because it is food and I don't want it going through but just a little bit to hold everything. You could use double-sided tape if you wanted to or even tape if, if that's what you'd like. I chose to do a little bit of hot glue. And with the rope, what I'm doing is I'm just tying the candy canes together at the base, and then I am making tying them to Santa's hands so that it looks like he is pulling the sled. And then I just do make sure that it's nice and tight after I get him positioned. And then, like I said, I do that ribbon. You can use any ribbon you want. The one that I chose was from the Dollar Tree. It's the little elf ribbon. And I thought that was fitting since this is Santa. And I just make that really nice and tight. I apologize for my head popping in there. And that's all there is to this guy. So this is a super fun and super customizable like gift that you can make for anybody. You can choose whatever candies you want. He doesn't even have to be carrying candies. He could be carrying bath stuff or gift cards whatever it's just a cute little way of presenting a gift so i thought it was awesome well let me know what you think i will be attaching one of those little tags gift tags from the dollar tree and attaching the name of the person that i'm giving this to and here he is all finished for this gift i'm using these candles from the dollar tree and i'm removing the plastic around them and i'm going to be melting them and creating a different kind of candle i tried two different methods for melting them i tried them on the pot in a pot on the stove i didn't like the way it was melting so probably because my pot wasn't deep enough but i didn't want to use so much water it was a really big pot i the, the next pot would be my canning pot so then i switched to the oven method and i love this method it's no mess and i don't have to worry about it i just use a a pan and then i put an aluminum pan in there put the two candles in set the oven to 350 preheated it to 350 i set the timer for 15 minutes but it actually wound up being about 27 minutes so this probably varies depending on your oven so just make sure you're cautious with that and then i got these two mugs from the dollar tree and i poured my wax in there i took the wick out and then I put it back in, I placed it in, and I let it set, and then I cut off the excess once it's set. And I made three using these little mugs. They didn't have any more. And then I made one using just a different kind of mug from the Dollar Tree. 
Now, I didn't mention before, I just let them cool and harden at room temperature. I didn't put them in the fridge or anything like that, if you're wondering. And here's what they look like. So that's the different one. And then I have one in just like the cellophane gift bag with like a little bit of a ribbon around. I think they're all cute. Whichever way you choose to go, you might want to do two as a set or one. It's up to you but I think they're super cute. So this next project is also an easy one. All you need is this pot holder, some vinyl, now you can do heat transfer, which is what I'm doing. If you have just permanent white vinyl, you could use that as well. If you have a different color pot holder, you use whatever you need. This was from the Dollar Tree. You're gonna need a wooden spoon or a plastic spoon, a sugar cookie mix, and a little cookie cutter. The vinyl now, when you're doing heat transfer, make sure you mirror it and make sure you put the shiny side down. I did it backwards the first time, so it is what it is. It'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, just keep that in mind when you're doing it. Like now when I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna put it on like this. But when you're cutting it, you have to put the shiny side down. And then I'm using this sugar cookie because they're nice Christmas cookies. You have one of these and then just a cookie cutter. So the design is from Creative Fabrica and I will link that below in my description. I was going to create it myself, but this is so much easier. So here it is done. You can put it in cellophane, you can put it in that bag. Um, if you're giving it to somebody right away without having to carry it or anything, you can just give it to them like this. You can, you know, tie a little nice little ribbon or something right over there. But I thought this was cute and I thought it was cute to match the ladle to the color of the vinyl. For design, I'm using this round piece of plywood that my husband cut from scrap plywood. Now, if you don't have access to that, sometimes on Marketplace you can find these wood rounds. But if not, you can always use a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree. And I'm spray painting it in the trim clad flat white. So I've been kind of playing around with purchasing different designs and Creative Fabrica actually reached out to me to see if I wanted to collaborate and of course I said yes after I looked at their website. I hadn't heard of them before but they have tons and tons of amazing graphics and they have a subscription and I've got an offer for you for the subscription for a dollar for their all access subscription for a month so if you want to give it a try and take a look at it it's linked in my description below they have tons and tons and tons of graphics it's and fonts and designs and all sorts of things it's pretty amazing so check it out and they do even have some freebies so make sure you click that link below and check them out so what I did was I used this Merry Christmas design and I had an idea to use plaid for the bottom of my sign and this was great because it was already made into a round design for a round sign so what I did was I hid the plaid part so I didn't cut that one part out I just cut out the Merry Christmas so that I could use that because I wanted to use my Dollar Tree fabric you can totally use that plaid design and make it yourself so I've seen lots of people do this like freehand and this is already done for you and your cricket can do that for you. So it's really cool. And so I cut out the Merry Christmas. Now I accidentally ripped one of the R's. So I just went back and I used an easy November font to just add in the R. It doesn't match up 100% but it, it's pretty close. So then I weeded everything out. Now when I wanted to use black vinyl instead of, usually when I do these things I always like paint it in, but for this one I wanted to actually use the vinyl. And I had Cricut vinyl on hand, so I had used Cricut vinyl this time. Sometimes I use Dollar Tree and sometimes I use uh, just like a whatever brand off of Amazon, but this time I used Cricut. And it worked pretty well except for that R that I ripped off. And when you're transferring any kind of design, you make sure that you use transfer paper. Or in my case, what I used was a Dollar Tree shelf liner, just the clear one. And what I do is I kind of just 
put it on my shirt a little bit so it's not so sticky because I don't want it to rip the paint off or anything like that. And once you do that, then your design is ready to be applied anywhere. So I have this fabric from the Dollar Tree leftover from last year and it's quite wrinkled. So I'm going to have to steam it and I'm going to use it to steam this this fabric because it had been at the bottom of my closet like wrinkled up I forgot that I even had it I thought I had I thought I had more pieces because I used it earlier this season but I don't know what I did with that piece but then I found this piece but then I had to steam it so anyway all I'm doing is I'm measuring out how many squares I want at the top and how many I want at the bottom making sure it's enough and I'm just using a pencil to put kind of where I want to cut it just so that way I have enough fabric as I said after I steam this I'm going to be putting it onto my sign but before I do that I want to kind of measure out where I want this Merry Christmas and then I'll wrap the fabric around after so I've measured out the middle and then kind of where the middle is and then how big my letters are and then where I want to position the highest letter so I just marked it off this you'll have to kind of do on your own it just depends on how big your round is so what I did even when I was I should, I should go back to when I was creating the design what I did was I measured out how big my circle was and it was 15 inches and that's the kind of circle that I made on Cricut and the, the great thing with that design was because it was already made for a circle sign you just have to had to make that circle the size of your sign so really easy to do it that way that's why sometimes it's nice to purchase these SVGs that are already created because someone's done the work for you unless you're really good at graphics it's sometimes it's like very very time consuming and then it's trial and error so and this was so easy so again I positioned it then in the where I wanted it to be on my wood round so and I kinda tried I eyeballed it to be kind of in the middle so the words were I believe four inches so I kinda did like two and two so this is kind of something that you'll have to do depending on how how big you do everything and what design you wind up using. I will link this design in the description below if you decide to use it. And you know that my wood round is 15 inches, so you can take it from there. But anyway, so I put it on this wood round and then I put the fabric on. So I use that little mark that I made with a pencil as my guide to which squares I have to cut off and I just use a fabric cutting tool and then I do it for both sides and then I fold it down one set of squares and hot glue it so that way it gives a more smooth looking edge and then I just use a hand staple gun to staple the fabric to the back and the reason I'm not hot gluing it is because it will be on my door probably my outside door or I might hang it up inside but I want to have the option for both and sometimes I'll glue with the changes in weather it kind of doesn't last forever so I thought if I reinforce it with the staples it will stay for a good amount of time and then the only thing I wind up hot gluing is a bow and I'm okay if the bow falls off because I can always remake a bow. So I add the fabric to the top and bottom and then I create a bow. I did not show you me creating the bow and actually even adding the fabric to the top because it's the same thing. You don't need to watch me do it twice. The video is going to be too long if we do that. But the bow I just used Dollar Tree ribbon and I just made loops that I taught like I twirled around each other and then I hot glued the bow to the to the top of the sign the reason I'm not showing you how I did the bow is because I I stink at making bows so it it's not a fun tutorial to watch me do a bow it never 
I feel like I just don't do you any favors by showing that to you. So I'll show you the finished bow. And then I just added these little sticks from the Dollar Tree just in there and I kind of poke them through and then I added a little bell the bell is just it's actually from like a wed it's from our wedding but you can still get these in the wedding section and I just kind of put it in there and I figured if I do wind up using it on the door it'll ding every time you open it and then I hot glue that and then I'm going to add some jute rope to the back here so that way you can hang it and I'll hot glue that as well and then I'll reinforce it with a staple. So there you can see I've done that. And that's all there is to it. I think it's gorgeous. Let me know what you think. This is, this is my favorite sign out of all three. I love it. Then this one, I will be making into a snowman as well. I love snowmen. And I'm going to be painting this out in a crisp white like this one. Now, you may have watched my ghost that I made for Halloween. This is kind of the same thing, except I'm using just a, a jar. You've probably seen me use these guys as well. This is from Peaches from Costco. And these jars are perfect. They don't like the... Everything comes off really, really nicely. They're like an awesome shape, and I love using them. And then I'm going to use an old, like you can see it's rusty, an old ring from a mason jar. You could use a mason jar if you don't have these. I just thought to make it a true trash to treasure. And because I have lots of these, we love eating canned peaches. And so for this, I'll be doing spray painting this black, and I'll show you the black paint in a minute. And because it doesn't quite, like it doesn't sit in, I'm going to hot glue it. So just, you know, make some adjustments. So I have, I have very little of this paint left, but if it's enough, um, it's just a black spray paint. It's just any old spray paint that you can have. I just like it because it's, it's fast drying and it's for wood and metal and it's interior and exterior. So if I decided to use something outside, I could. And same with this guy. So if I wanted to put this out, I could. And that's it. So even for this guy, I just drew everything freehand using a Sharpie, a black and orange Sharpie. And then I'm adding a scarf to the bottom. And then I, I have some difficulties. I have dirty fingers that have paint on them. And I wound up getting black paint on, on him. So I won't have to fix it. But I'll show you that in a minute. So like a dummy, I spray painted the wrong size of... Um, mason jar so you need the the ones with the smaller holes so or maybe this solar lamp isn't I have other solar lamps but I can't find them I don't know what I've done with them so I've just used an old one and they're the, the ones from the Dollar Tree but I think these are very very old ones so the new ones I believe are bigger and I packed away my Halloween stuff and I don't know why I packed away the solar I didn't think I did but I can't find it anyway so I'm going to put this in and I'm going to make this hole a little bit bigger so I can squeeze this guy in and just hot glue everything to the base here. But I'll start. I don't want to paint anything more like to waste. So and I'm, I can't buy the solar lamps now. So I'm going to improvise as you can improvise when you're making DIYs. So... Just glue that in there. Oh no, I got it on my fingers. So I've cut the hole to fit the solar lamp and I'm just going to uh, color it in black. And because I'm always in a rush, I seem to never be able to be ahead of the game. I am using my hair dryer to just quickly dry the paint off so I can do another coat because I did have to do two coats because it's the it's from a ribbon roll the little thing is from a ribbon roll and it's that glossy card board so it makes it kind of slippery and a little bit harder to paint you have to do just two coats not harder just two coats so I did correct where I got my fingers uh, finger marks on the jar I wound up just spray painting that part and then 
Then I'm going to go over with some deco art chalk paint in white and I just go over the whole jar including where I've sharpied his face and then I just use a baby wipe to wipe it off. And then at the bottom of his hat, just to cover the ring parts, because of course the mason jar, it wasn't a mason jar, so it shows the ring parts. I'm going to put a little bow, again with some leftover ribbon, just to give it a good nice cover and just to make the hat look fancier. Now, this solar light will glow and it'll make your snowman glow. So if you wanted to have it in the dark, it's a great little piece to have. Unfortunately, it is not dark. So I wasn't able to show you, but I can link the Halloween decor video so you can kind of see what it looks like when it's glowing in the dark. And because this was an old solar light, it was just in a box, so it did not have enough time to charge. So I am, like I said, not able to show you what it looks like in the dark. So here he is, all finished. I hope you like him. I think he turned out pretty cute. And again, a great tray decor or mantle decor or anything, really. He's just cute. Let me know what you think. Okay, so for this one, it's kind of like a trash to treasure. The only reason why I would say kind of is because um, when you, like if you have an old calendar that you're not going to use, so some of you might have the 2021 calendars, well, the year is coming to an end. Don't throw it out because you have all these beautiful pictures that you can use, little ones or big ones. So I'm going to use actually the December right here and then I need to use this picture and I love keeping these so I keep all sorts of calendars for the pictures <clears throat> and I'm going to make it into a sign great way to reuse stuff and also like if you have wrapping paper you could do that with wrapping paper Christmas cards you can make a collage or you could just make mini pictures so many options so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to use the cardboard that it comes with to keep it straight and this picture and I'm going to make a nice winter picture now I will also use tumble blocks you don't have to because if you have if you have enough paint stir sticks you could totally make a frame out of those I just don't so I'm using the blocks and but you could like you can see you can kind of go like that um, I'm going to use tumble blocks just as a frame. You don't even have to do that if you don't want to. Or if you have little bits and pieces of wood, kind of that you've cut up from other projects, you could make a nice border around. Super easy. Or <clears throat> even if you have, you know, old wood rulers that are being chucked or whatever, and you wanted to use them, have a purpose for them, you could use those as well. Many options. I just... I've run out of all of my trash, so I'm using my tumble blocks to do this. And I will stain the tumble blocks so that they're a nicer, darker color. So I'm using the cardboard that came with the calendar, and I'm going to glue on the piece on there. I'm using Pop Mod Podge. You can use a glue stick. It might even work better with a glue stick. I just found that my glue stick dried out. And then I'm gluing it on, and then I'm going to use the tumble blocks and I'm going to use six for each side. So 24 tumble blocks, less one or two, just cause you have to make some cuts and if you make some mistakes, but aim for 24 and if you use less, great. And I'm going to paint the tumble blocks in a black acrylic paint and then I will hot glue everything as my frame and that's all there is to this DIY, super, super easy.
So again, when you get to the end, you're going to have little bits that you have to cut. I'm using my mini miter saw that I have. You could use anything that you prefer using. This is kind of why I got it for these tumble block projects. It's quite hard to cut without, um, like when just because there's such little cuts, but maybe you have something, some tools that you can use. I just found that this is the best one to use. So I just kind of put a pencil mark where I wanted it to be cut. And then again, hot glued everything. Now I didn't glue anything at the back to help for it to hang. You could glue some jute rope to the back to have it hang, but I think I'm gonna have it like on my mantle. So I just leave it the way it is. And then I just use a little bit of black acrylic paint just to kind of distress around the frame. And that's all there is to it. Let me know what you think of this one. I'm really excited about this one because it was so easy to make. So for the one, I'm going to be using this Tremclad flat white spray paint. It's just a spray paint I had on hand. And I'm going to be using this Christmas tree and a crate. Don't worry about this square. I will be using this as well. But I'm going to be using the crate for this DIY. As well as some foam blocks from the Dollar Tree and some red spray paint. I will also use some vinyl to cut out for my writing and then that's all there is to this DIY. Actually there'll be a little bit of a ribbon as well. So what I've done is I've spray painted the Christmas tree. I've written down the <clears throat> numbers on my little foam blocks using a paint pen and I've cut out Christmas countdown using a child's font from Da Font and I wanted it to look like a child had written down Christmas Countdown and I actually did Xmas Countdown. I know some people really don't like that being used for Christmas but for this I thought it would be really cute as a like a little child's countdown. So I just removed my vinyl and I always use transfer paper for transferring the vinyl because when you have like a sign or anything like that it tends to stretch quite a bit. So I apply that and you gotta be you have to be really careful because when you have little thin fonts it wants to raise up so just when you're pulling it off just be careful. So this video is a part of the DIY collab that Domestic Diva hosts and it's a great collab because there's a whole bunch of creators that come together and we create a playlist of different DIY DIYs that we're doing. The theme for this month is Christmas. So if you haven't had a chance to check out this challenge, make sure you check it out. I'll have the playlist linked in my description and I'll have Sonia over at Domestic Diva DIY. I'll have her information linked in my description below as well. Make sure you check her out. She is one super talented lady. Once I get my vinyl on there, I wanted to put a little bit of a bow up top and I thought I could put it kind of halfway down then I didn't like that so I put another so I put it a little bit higher and I still didn't like that so then I took some ribbon and I just added like a bow to the top that kind of flowed down and I really liked the way that turned out and again I just made a little bow tying it kind of like you would a shoelace and just hot glued it on. There was a little crack in the Christmas tree so I was just adding some glue to fix it up. So after I added all of that, I just touched up some of the cubes because the paint had kind of ripped off when it was drying and I put it in and there's my countdown. I think it's really, really cute. What do you think? So for the DIY number two, I am using these wood snowflakes, which I got at Dollar Tree. And they're just different sizes, and they're not sticky at the back, they're just little wood cutouts. And I'm spray painting in them in that same trim clad flat white spray paint. And I'm also using a bamboo cutting board. And this is another super easy one. All of these are really quick and easy DIYs. So I'm just going to be, once these snowflakes dry, I'm going to be creating a Christmas tree. So I just kind of try to figure out how I want the sizing to work and the pattern. This is totally 
personal preference. So kind of play around with it and see what you like. It all depends on what size your snowflakes are and which ones you wind up buying. The only tricky thing with this one is that I noticed that I wanted my board to be darker after I put this on, after I hot glued them on. So I went back and I stained it with the Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze in Java. Now if you, before you hot glue your pieces down, kind of take a look at your board and see if you like it. And if you're going to write in words, so kind of the, the, the reason I wound up staining it darker is I didn't really like the way the words looked that I wrote down. You'll see what I mean a little bit later. So I kind of went back and tried to mute them and make them look kind of like they're faded. They were just a little bit too too dark and too rich. So kind of play around with that before you use a Sharpie. I should have done that before. And I knew was like when I was writing with that Sharpie, I knew that I'm like, oh, I should have just made sure I liked it before I committed to a Sharpie. But live and learn. So that's kind of something that I would have done differently. But I still like the way it turned out. I did wind up using one more thing, um, the same ribbon that I used in the DIY before, and I covered the Merry Christmas. I didn't like the way I wrote it freehand, so I covered it up with that ribbon, and I, like I said, I went over top with decorative glaze and everything just to mute everything down. So I wrapped the ribbon over top a few times, and I wanted it to kind of look like it was kind of coming off. So I wanted like different levels to it, so that's what I did. So I just used a little bit of Dollar Tree sandpaper and I just, like I said, sanded down the words a little bit and then I applied the decorative glaze first with a paper towel and then I kind of worked it in and then I used a brush to get it in between. I did get it a little bit on the snowflakes so I used a baby wipe to remove it. That's why I said it's easier if you do all these things before you attach your Christmas tree, like your little snowflakes, but I think it turned out really cute regardless. And here is the finished piece. Let me know what you think. So again, another super DIY for number three. I'm using, again, this spray paint and I'm using this square plank and it's from the Dollar Tree to create my DIY. And I only need one coat of this. And then I'm also using these trucks from the Dollar Tree, they're ornament trucks. I'm not using these Christmas lights. My son just put them in my hand, gave them to me, so I put them on the table so you might see his little hands grabbing them over here. But I remove the ornament and I remove all the little hooks off of the ornament. And then I hot glue it to the bottom of the truck, leaving a little bit of space because I will also be using that same ribbon. So basically I used one roll of that ribbon for the entire, like for all three DIYs. So it went a long way, and then I used a little bit of a different kind of ribbon for the bow on this as well. And again, like I said, this is a super easy one, and I had a snowflake left over. You can see it in the corner there from the first DIY, so I put that on here as well. And then I distress it with that Rust-Oleum decorative glaze to give it more of a rustic look. And that's basically all there is to it. I do, like I said, wrap at the bottom some of that ribbon and at the top. And then I do like a little bow just using little strips of ribbon. And then I add a little bell, which is from a bell garland from the Dollar Tree that I had left over actually from last year. So after I get everything glued on, I use a pencil this time. I'm a little bit smarter than I was with the previous DIY. And I write in the words Christmas trees. And I put a little arrow. I'm using a red Sharpie to go over top of the Christmas trees uh, wording. And then I'm using a black Sharpie for the arrow. And that's all there is to this one. Another super easy one. These can be tray decor pieces. These can be little accents in your vignettes. It can be anything. They're just cute little Dollar Tree DIYs that are super fun and super easy to make. And I think they turned out great. Look at this guy. Look how cute he is. Let me know which one is your favorite. If you have not subscribed, make sure you hit the big subscribe button. Hit the like button. I also have a 
coffee page. So if you wanted to buy me a coffee, please go ahead and do that. That's linked in my description below. So I am in love with the Dollar Tree palettes that I have seen many different creators use and even on Instagram and Facebook. And I have not been able to find them. So I'm creating my own using 21 popsicle sticks. And I start off by just arranging them to the way that I would like the palette to look like. This is kind of up to you how big you want it to be. I thought four sticks out and then eight sticks down would be big enough. And then once I arrange and see how far I want them to be, then I go ahead and I add the hot glue and I just attach everything with the hot glue. And then I give them a little bit of height. I give the palette a little bit of height by adding another three popsicle sticks on each side from the bottom. And that's it for the palette. And then I use my Rust-Oleum decorative glaze in the java brown and i just stain this i just use an old rag to do it and i love using this glaze as a stain it works really really well so after the stain sets i thought i was going to use my Cri cricut to cut out the word joy using v red vinyl but then once I put that on I didn't like the way that looked so I decided to use some red burlap which I also got at the Dollar Tree they have these burlap ribbons available now and they're really really cute because they have them in, in orange and brown and red so I used the red burlap and I cut out just a piece that was wide enough for the entire palette I wound up cutting another piece of the burlap just because I saw a little bit of the brown showing through on the burlap and I wanted it to be a little bit darker so I just put two pieces of burlap you don't have to I just like the way it looked better and I glued hot glue that on and then I cut out jute rope and I made the word joy out of the jute rope and I attached a little hook on using jute rope onto the top of the palette so it kind of looks like it could be a hang hanging somewhere or whichever and that is it. Minimal materials, very cute, and has that rustic Christmas feel that I really like. So if you guys thought this DIY was easy, the next one is even easier. So the next one you're gonna need about seven popsicle sticks and then you're going to make a santa ladder which is super easy just use these popsicle sticks you're going to need a little bit of holiday red paint from the dollar tree as well as this little garland now this is the only thing that i'm not sure that you can find now but you can find something similar that has like little berries so you can wrap it around i'm sure of it I just had this on hand from last year and I will pick some more up this year because I really like to use them in like little bits of decor here and there. But that's all you need for this one. Just look how cute it is. That's what it's going to look like. Easy. So all I'm doing is hot gluing the ladder after I paint it. So first you paint it in the holiday red, you do both sides, let it dry, then you hot glue it all together and that is it. The only few things that you have to remember is that you don't want to use too much hot glue so that it doesn't kind of spill all over. And when you're hot gluing, you want to put them one on top of the other. And then you also want to kind of, when you do the middle part, you want to have it go in an open triangle so that way it's not a straight up ladder. If that's what the look you're going for, that was the look that I was going for. You're going to wrap that garland around, maybe hot glue it in a few spots if you want to, or if you want to be able to use this for maybe the fall, you don't even have to wrap the girl garland around, uh, glue it around. You just wrap it around and that's it. And here's the finished piece. So I'm going to sound really vain and say, this next one is really cute too. I love it because I really do love all the ones that I created. So this is a cool one because I'm using... One of these little craft jars from the Dollar Tree. I thought I had two on hand, but I didn't. So the other one that I'm using is just a glass jar. So this is where you could use stuff that you have on hand at home. I just wanted to show you that you could get one of these craft jars at the Dollar Tree and it would work. But like I said, any old jars, if you can reuse them rather than recycling them, is great. So you need two jars, some gold metallic paint, white paint, and some black paint, and a little bit of ribbon i'm using this checkered one which i actually got during the summer not at christmas time so you might be able to pick it up now i got that last year though 
So hopefully any kind of red ribbon would work too. You're going to paint both of these jars. One jar you're going to paint red, the other jar you're going to paint white. Now I did have one of my viewers tell me that pouring the paint might work a lot better with the glass. I saw the comment after I painted these. So next time I'm painting any glass or anything like that, I might try it. I tend to get really messy, so I don't like to pour stuff, but you know, why not give it a try? So I did two coats of white and red, and I did a little bit on the inside, not like too, too much, just a bit. So in case I saw like a little bit coming through the white, I had to do a little bit more. If you do have chalk paint on hand, I think it works a little bit better than the acrylic paint. It just has better coverage. So once you have these guys painted, then you, then you need to do your decorations and your design. So the white one, you guessed it, is a snowman. If you've seen my mega video or any of my Christmas DIYs from last year, I love snowman stuff. So I'm just drawing three buttons. If you want to be really, really precise and perfect, you could use something like a stencil to make the little buttons. I kind of wanted them to look like they were coal so that they like instead of buttons but they were like cool so they were kind of like choppy but like I said if you want to make them perfect by all means use a stencil or something like that and then this guy is done he just needs his little ribbon Uh, this guy's going to be Santa, so I'm going to be drawing on his belt. Again, if you want, you can use a stencil or you can freehand it. I chose to freehand it. So I'm just drawing the belt in black, and then I will be going over it in some gold. For the flowers, I wanted to show you that you could use fall or summer flowers for this in case your Dollar Tree runs out of them really fast or you just don't have any on hand. So these are the peonies that I use. They're wild peonies and then these are dahlias. They're both from the Dollar, or sorry, gladiolas. They're both from the Dollar Tree and I'm just using one stem of the gladiolas and one stem of the peonies and here they are and I just swapped. I put the red with the white and the white with the red and I think they turned out really cute. They'll be perfect tray decor items. So here I wanted to show you what decorative glaze I was using, and then... No. Yep, I spilled the decorative glaze, so I decided to just continue on working so I could get some of the glaze off of my desk and put it on this chair, and then I had to clean it up, but... Yep, yeah, that was quite entertaining. So once I cleaned everything up... I went ahead and I put these things together. So for the next part of this DIY, you're going to need these little socks. So again, these socks, the Christmas socks I got at the Dollar Tree last year. Actually, I got them in January when they had, or like end of December when they had their big sale. So if you don't have them, you could just use red socks. And as you can see, I'm using a part of a red sock there too. And then one of these little balls, some rice, and some elastic bands. So what I'm doing here now, because I had used this sock for another DIY as well, so this was what was left over. I'm just going to hot glue it together so that it stays closed. And then I will fill it with rice. I'm not filling it too much because I want it fitting into the Anirondack chair. Because I'm making a Christmas Santa gnome sitting in his chair. So... I don't want it too, too full. So I fill it up and I test it out in the chair and then I see how much more or less I need. And then I tie it with the elastic. And then once I get the size that I want, I go ahead and I add that sock to the top of the gnome. And I pull down a little bit of it to make the nose. I wanted the nose to be red because sometimes Santa is kind of flushed. So I wanted his nose to be red. And I tie that as well with an elastic. So then I added the beard. The beard is this fur that I had from last year. You can pick it up. They have blankets 
at Dollarama, which is our version of the Dollar Tree. It's a little bit more expensive, so probably like the, the Dollar General. But I have seen little fur ribbons at the Dollar Tree. It's just like a hit and miss. Sometimes you have they have them, sometimes they don't. So just any kind of fur will do, or even white material. You could use white felt if you can't find the fur for his beard. And that's all there is to this little guy, and he's going to sit in his chair and wait for all the kids to come and tell him their wishes. So a few more DIYs to go. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Uh, take a, you know, stretch a little bit while I'm talking here. But the next few DIYs are really easy too. The next one is a Christmas tree made out of clothespins. So another item that you can get at the Dollar Tree right now, actually all year long. So the pack of clothespins are 36. You're not going to need all 36 of them. You're just going to need a half of a package. So you're going to take one of those little strips that the clothespins come on and you're just going to make a Christmas tree actually you need less than half a package one quarter of a package I would say and you're just going to put them on depending on how big you want this Christmas tree if you want a bigger you can use more and what I'm doing is the bottom four I'm putting one beside the other and then the other ones I'm kind of zigzagging up top as you can see and then I've put them on and then I go ahead and hot glue them to make sure that I like the way it looks so again you could there's so many options you could do with the clothespins you could even take them apart and glue them the other way so that they could make a star whichever so many different options if you guys are interested I can show you some clothespin DIYs too if that would interest you let me know in the comments below but you're gonna hot glue these down and then you're going to take some forest green acrylic paint and you're just going to paint them on and use one of those little balls that the wood beads wood balls that I was talking about and you're going to add it to the top and you're going to add one of the Dollar Tree wood stems that they have they kind of look like birch bark but like little mini ones you're going to do that for the stump and that's all there is to it. And because I noticed he was a little bit wobbly, probably because I stuck him onto the paper instead of a piece of wood, I just added another popsicle stick to the back. But if you put him on a jumbo popsicle stick, he won't be wobbly. So this DIY I actually got from my sister. She's the domestic diva. DIY. She did this I think last year or the year before where she used some pots. I don't know if she used this, these exact ones but she used some pots from the Dollar Tree to create bells and that's what I'm doing. So I'm just using two of them. You could use three. They come in a pack of three so if you wanted to use up all three of them you could. I just wanted to use two and I'm going to make them look like they're galvanized like silver bells. So I start off with just painting them black and then I do my galvanizing So I didn't show you the full galvanizing because I have many galvanizing tutorials on my channel. So what I can do is I can actually link one of my videos down in the description below. So just check it out. But what I'm using is on top of the black, I put some silver and some white and then some more black and I just dab them on. So I put them all on a little bowl and I dab them on as I go. There's not really like a set, okay, you have to do this first or that. It's just whatever you like to look at. Sometimes I even add blue to it. Sometimes I don't, this time I didn't. So then I made little holes into the bells because they have the drainage holes that you can poke through. And I'm putting some jute rope through them and I'm going to tie, tie that at the top and then I will have a little bit hangout so it looks like there's like a bell portion inside. And then I will tie a ribbon to it. And sorry, I did make myself clear at the where the little bell portion hangs in the bottom, I do a little knot so it doesn't come out. And then I leave a loop and then I hot glue it together as well before I add the ribbon. So I'm just using some of this checkered ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I believe they have it even now. 
not just at Christmas time. And I'm just making like a mock bow. I don't do bow tutorials because I'm not an expert on them. So I don't do, I feel like I don't do them the best. So I just did little loops and hot glued everything together. And here they are. Now I saw someone do this similar DIY a while back. I can't remember who it was. I just remember I really liked it. So I had picked up one of these shovels at the beginning of the season and I'm just spray painting it in this Rust-Oleum heirloom white. Actually our Walmart was closing down. So these were so cheap. I picked up a whole bunch and then I'm going to be putting the Rust-Oleum chalked charcoal paint up at the top where the little handle is by all means you could use acrylic paint now the only advice that I have for you is maybe put Mod Podge at the bottom and then paint it because the paint kept on coming off so I wound up putting Mod Podge over top of it and I antiqued it a little bit with the black and now what I wanted to do for this shovel is I wanted to show you that you could use this you could use this for all the seasons so it's very neutral, kind of farmhousey, And I'm going to add jute rope to the kind of stem of the shovel. And then I will, I have a bow that I created again off camera because I had a really hard time creating it, but I'll show you what it looks like finished. And then I'm just gonna Velcro that bow to the, just where the handle meets the open part of the shovel. And I just Velcro one piece to the bow and one piece to that so that way you can change it up for the seasons for the fall you can use it you know a fall ribbon for the summer you can maybe do some lemons or whatnot for spring some some tulips or whichever so this way it gives you options as you can see in the back I didn't put too much paint because wherever I have it I'll have it kind of against something so you won't see the back so there's no point in wasting paint. So the ribbon is a mishmash, uh, this white Santa ribbon and snowman ribbon I actually got from my friend. I don't know where she got it, maybe Michael's and maybe White Rose when they used to have it. She said it's very old and she hasn't used it in years so she didn't need it and she knew that I could use it from some of my videos. And then again that checkered ribbon as well as a little bit of burlap. Well, you made it. We're in the last DIY before the bonus DIYs. So I got this mason jar looking thing sign from the Dollar Tree and it's Canada Day themed because that's all they had. I know that they have summer themed ones too. So they're probably still around at your store. You might have a 4th of July one if you're in the States. And all I'm going to be doing is mod podging this. So the Dollar Tree has these cute little checkered napkins right now. They also have tablecloths and all sorts of things so it might be a good time to pick these up and I have little hands helping me as you can see he really wanted to mod podge mod podge this so I show him what he needs to do and he's going to do it for me and so I just put the mod podge at the bottom and then well he puts it at the bottom and then I go over top of it a little bit with the mod podge I don't let him do that just because it's it is tissue paper I mean tissue paper it's, it's a napkin so it's quite thin now I don't do it all the way around because I'm not going to put anything up at the top I, I wind up using two napkins just so that you can't see anything through them so do the two napkins that's why I did this part by myself just because I was afraid he would rip it and he also got tired of it he you know his crafting attention span is quite limited so put two of these on mod podge them let them dry off then cut off the excess I just use a fabric cutter for this and it worked really well and then I'm going to use some burlap for the bottom and some jute rope for the top and again, this is another one that you could use in multiple seasons. So I wanted to show you this one as well.
So once you have that all glued on there with some hot glue, then you're going to take some floral wire and you're going to put it through those two little holes and you're going to just attach this little clip and it's just like a little clip for papers that I had on hand and just hot glue that on and create a little bow. So I'm just using some burlap, the red burlap that I used before and then some regular burlap. And I'm just making little strips to make a funky little bow that I'm going to attach to the top of the mason jar. So what I'm doing is hot gluing these little bits. I'm doing red burlap, brown burlap, red burlap, brown burlap, and that's it for the bow. Very simple bow. So I showed you this tutorial because it was very simple. And if you're if your bow bows are a problem like they are for me, then this is something that you could do. And then you can use that little hook to attach your favorite Christmas picture. Or if you guys didn't know, it is 23 Mondays until Christmas. So you could attach a cute little sign like that as a countdown. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my community for updates. My house is in a massive renovation. So unfortunately, my posting has been very sloppy. I hope to get back on track really soon, like this month. So starting with this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And leave me a comment so I know what's going on, whether you enjoyed this or not. Thank you. Have a great day.